Hello there, I'm Beth Wright and I'm broadcasting out of the UK into your homes, into your, onto your phones and into your space and into your world and I just want to thank you for welping, welcoming me and um, if you like what I talk about, it, it does vary, I mean there'll be some things you're interested in and some things you're not but today I thought I would talk about Love Island. Um, I want to talk about it from the point of Caroline Flax um, who was arrested for domestic abuse and how that would impact someone else who was less famous. So basically for those of you who don't watch Love Island, Caroline Flack is a host and what she does is she comes on to Love Island and you know there's this big sensational music and stomping and hype as she goes into the villa to either um, welcome somebody new or to get rid of somebody who's not compatible in the villa and so Caroline Flack she's from Enfield she was born in Enfield and so she has been um, arrested for seriously assaulting her 31 year old boyfriend now she's 40 and so she's nine years his his senior yes yeah, so we do not know why she was arrested. We do not know what what argument in, ensued. We can hypothesize and say, oh, is it because she's got some insecurities, because he's so much younger than her? But um, we don't know what it is. And I haven't seen anything that explains what it is. Now, why I am raising this is because domestic abuse is a very serious crime. It's serious in a lot of countries and I'm going to focus on the three countries where Love Island airs, which is the UK, USA and Australia. Now, in these three countries, the rules for domestic abuse for a non-citizen means that they can get deported. That is how serious it is can be arrested it's it's a breach of moral turpitude let me just tell you um rather than try to because i do prefer i do want to get it right okay so in america um, domestic abuse can result in not being able to obtain a visa or a green card it results in inadmissibility, even though it's not considered a crime for non for non immigrants. Well, for non Americans, sorry, it is a crime. Domestic violence is a crime of moral turpitude and is listed under the federal statutory grounds of deportability, which shows the extent of the seriousness. So Caroline Flack says she's stepping down from series six which is the one that's coming out in January and is going to be aired in South Africa. Now, she's devastated that she won't be going to South Africa. I didn't see that she was devastated about what she did to her 31-year-old boyfriend. That, didn't, that wasn't revealed anywhere. But, you know, I just think to myself, the fact that she says, oh, I'm stepping down from series six, the inference is, is that she's going to try again for series seven. I might be wrong, but that's the inference. Because she says she's not, she's not saying I'm stepping down completely. I've got nothing to do with Love Island. What she's saying is she's stepping down from series six. And I can only assume that she's hope, waiting for everything to blow over and then she'll apply for series seven. I'm mentioning this again because if that was a, a non-citizen, the outcome would be totally different. You know, a few days later, I think um, some newspapers caught her with her boyfriend, the one who she'd seriously assaulted, canoodling. Now, I don't know if that is a genuine reconciliation don't know if they're doing it for the cameras some some people do i'm not saying that she has but we do not know but i think you know if i had been seriously assaulted there's no way i'd be canoodling i that would be done 
So I don't know if her boyfriend has got issues why he would feel that it's okay for her to assault him and then be canoodling three days later. So when you, when you have people who react like that, who react with violence, sometimes we have to think about what is their past? What is their experience? What are their insecurities? Are they stable enough to even be hosting a show like this? Because when you think what Love Island is about, Love Island is about finding love and it's about overcoming challenges and it's about, you know, finding out who's compatible and who is not. And then when you um, find, when you find the person is not compatible, it's about moving on. But, you know, you'll still find those people in there who try to overcome challenges. Now, if you're looking at the way Caroline Flack overcomes challenges, if, 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 her, if her resolution is to give her boyfriend a beating and that is the way she chooses to resolve the conflict, is that track record a good role model to host Love Island? I, you know, I might be a bit old fashioned or maybe I'm being judgmental, but, you know, I don't think it is. I would like to think that somebody who's hosting Love Island has a track record of an enduring relationship that tells us, yes, love works. Enduring a relationship and overcoming challenges through, you know, communicating effectively works. Not when you get all tongue-tied and like she, I don't know what happened with her, why she seriously assaulted her boyfriend, but she just lashed out and the next thing you know, she's arrested. And like I said, for her to be arrested, it has to be a serious assault. And I understood the neighbours called the police and what have you. I don't know, maybe the boy or the man might not have called the police. Maybe, maybe it's not the first time. Normally when people are assaulted, it's not usually the first time. They've normally been assaulted before in that relationship. So maybe she's an abuser. We don't know. I'm just hypothesizing. I'm just speculating. We don't know what goes on. But what my point was is just supposing it wasn't Caroline Flack that had seriously assaulted um, her partner. Supposing it was her partner who had seriously assaulted her. What do you think the outcome would be? Or supposing it was a black woman who had seriously assaulted a white man. What do you think the outcome would be? Or conversely, if a white man had seriously assaulted a black woman, what do you think that outcome would be? Or if a black man had seriously assaulted a white woman, how do you think the what do you think the consequences of that would be? And finally, what about if a white woman seriously assaulted a black man? What do you think the outcome of that would be? Well, we've seen that with Amber Geiger, haven't we? And so many others. So all I'm saying is that depending on who it is determines the seriousness. If you're a citizen and you're white, you might get off light. If you're an immigrant and you're black, you've got to go back. That is how it looks. And I bet it's not even that straightforward either. I bet they're going to be punished in the meantime. So the, the reason I say that is that because we cannot look on this incident lightly. Domestic, offense, domestic abuse is a serious offence. And like I said, it is considered as moral turpitude in America. In um, Australia, domestic abuse is considered being of bad character and is therefore a deportable offence if, if you're a non-Australian. Assaulting and seriously injuring anyone is not normal behaviour. You know what else I was thinking of? I, I was thinking of, well, I don't know how many of you watch Love Island. I don't even know if you're going to be watching it to this point if you don't. But 
they do have a section in Love Island where sometimes um, one of the partners is so distraught, disappointed, frustrated, angry. And they sit there and they talk to the screen, i.e. us, about how they're feeling. Sometimes they break down and cry. And I was thinking that, wouldn't it be great to have a counsellor in there? I'd love to do that. But they had a counsellor in there who actually took them through that stage, who actually kind of um, made them feel better or showed them ways how to resolve the situation with n not necessarily giving up, but maybe looking at different ways of um, either continuing or ending the relationship. I think it would be a fantastic idea because a lot of those people that go on Love Island, when they share their stories, a lot of them are broken. I mean, last time we had um, people who were adopted, you know, people who lost their parents, you know, and some of them had lost their parents just weeks before they went into Love Island. Some of them had been abused, all sorts of things. So the people on Love Island, these, these I don't know what you call them, we call them islanders, you know a lot of them are damaged and I think it would be a brilliant idea to have a counsellor in there and we actually, the audience or the viewers, actually watch that dynamic of the counsellor. It doesn't have to be long, maybe three to five minutes, you know, the, the, um, the crew would edit it, but you know just enabling them to overcome that 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 dilemma because sometimes you know when we think about um, Muggy Mike who hung himself we don't know the amount of stress that he took while he was in we know it was stressful when he was in the in the um, in the villa but we don't know what happened when he was outside the villa and he hung himself he committed suicide so I think it would be an excellent idea but that's going away from the point um, do you think she should be let back on to Love Island, to host Love Island? You know, someone with a track record of assault. Is that the type of role model that young, remember these these couples, these women, boys, well I call them boys and girls, but these young men and women, they're very young, they're very impressionable, they're usually aged between 18 and sometimes 26, maybe 30. I think 30 is the max, but they're young people. And I believe that the role model to host the, you know, Love Island should be somebody who's quite credible, nobody with a sticky um, cloud hanging over their head. They've got four people um, that they're thinking about um, replacing Caroline Flack. And I'll tell you who they are. It's Laura Whitmore, Laura Whitmore, Stacey Solomon, Maya Jelma, and Gemma Collins. Now, personally, you know, I don't know if you, like I said, I don't know if you've watched Love Island, but they have this point which is key to me, to any host, any replacement host. They have to be able to meet the expectation of that walk to that sensationalised music. There's this point when ordinarily it would have been Caroline Flack walks into the villa to tell somebody that they have to leave. And it's like boom, 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 and all this, you know, pumps and circumstance. So whoever takes those steps, they have to meet that expectation on the other side. So when that music stops, their voice, their presence, their character, all come to the fore so that we actually um, are satisfied once the suspense is over. Now, um, like I said, <clears throat> I think Maya Jama or Laura Whitmore are the best candidates. That's just in my opinion. I think they're both MTV broadcasters. They've got they've got the know-how, they know how to speak, they're good communicators and I think they'd really be good at it but we don't know who they're going to choose so that would be interesting. Um, what else? Um, I wanted to say UK, where's UK's one? Hmm. Yeah, UK is an offence, okay. In the UK it's domestic abuse is a criminal offence under the immigration and asylum legislation and is therefore deportable. 
well, aggressors are deportable. So once again, you know, Caroline Flack is from the UK. So if she was an immigrant, or if she was a non-citizen, she would be deported for this offence. So we're not talking about any light conviction. We're talking about serious stuff. And, you know, it shouldn't be that just because it's Caroline Flack, she gets off lightly. And like I said, I don't want, you know, she's back with her boyfriend. Um, don't know how that's happened. But there again, you know, we have domestic abuse against men and we have domestic abuse against women. And a lot of time, the um, victims always go back to the perpetrator. You know, they just keep going back for more and the beating gets worse and worse and they just keep going back. It's almost like it's an addiction. And a lot of people who stay in abusive relationships, sometimes they feel as though they deserve it. They've got, they haven't been raised with love, you know, so they don't have that self-love and that self-respect. So a lot of them actually feel as though they're deserving of the assault. And some of them, they just don't know how to get out of it. Some of them are dependent. Some of them are vulnerable. And so they put up with it. Some of them, they don't have nowhere to go. Some of them, it's family pressure. There are so many different reasons why people stay in abusive relationships. So, okay, um, Caroline Flack and her boyfriend, I've got her name, his name is somewhere. But I don't think it really matters, to be honest. Lewis, it's Lewis something. But yeah, um, yeah, you know, people do stay in abusive relationships and maybe her boyfriend is one such person. You can't be too um, judgmental, but I do know that when I think about Love Island, it is about caring and forgiving and trying to work things out. And in knowing when it's time to throw in the towel. I think that's the most important because some of them, they linger because they're not too sure. They drag it out. But, you know, if it ain't working for your love, you just leave. And so that is where I, that is where I think that when it comes to that point where, you know, you're being abusive, that's a time when that's, it's gone too far. There must have been a point where you just felt, look, this is not working. It shouldn't reach a stage where it gets abusive. So I think, um, yeah, I think it's important about the host is, should have been an enduring relationship that shows integrity. I think it gives, it gives the young people something to look forward to. I think it shows them that something could work. Um, it's a bit like the bachelor and the bachelorette when when you know when they, they always introduce them to the relationships that have worked that have endured and so people going on it realize yeah love can work but if you've got a role model or a host that you know is you know abusing her her partner you know it's not sending a positive message to young people and though you have to remember, even though they look quite mature, they are young people. So, um, like I said, I don't know if marrying, you know, dating someone nine years old junior brings out our insecurities. You know, sometimes we, you know, especially as women, when we go with men younger than us, ourselves. I mean, I've been out with somebody who's about 13 years younger than me. And... I didn't necessarily feel insecure, but I found him very provocative. And yeah, sometimes you can feel a bit insecure when somebody is so, so much younger. And it's to do with the woman more than it has to do with the man, I believe. I think the man, you know, if he's with you, he's with you because he wants to be with you. But I think the women, the older women have, issues about that and they'll always be thinking you know does he really want to be with me or does he really want to be with somebody younger so you know maybe she had that kind of dilemma maybe she she just didn't she just felt that she was a bit too old even though it was working so we just don't know um 
Yes, yeah, she's been on Love Island for five years and says she will stand down for Series 6. Um, like I said, she's probably waiting for it to blow over. And I, I would like to have um, your thoughts about whether or not she should go back. Because we all have tantrums, we all have to resolve conflict. And lashing out is not the answer. So, I think I'm going to stop it there. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.